And now you know what time it is. It's the daily three. That's three questions, three minutes. Sam, take it away. Lavelle mentioned he was at Media Access yesterday for the Vikings where Kevin O'Connell spoke about how excited he is about Irv Smith's potential. Now, Smith is still easing his way back from meniscus surgery, but he's in that contract year. They're still waiting for that bust-out year from Irv Smith. Ron, I want to put you on the spot. Give me a prediction for Irv Smith's production in this offense. Touchdowns, yards, receptions. Well, if you look at Tyler Higby and you look at the last three seasons of Higby, he's had over 180 catches, almost 1,900 yards, and 13 touchdowns. In the last two seasons, he's had 10 touchdowns. So I easily can say Irv Smith can get five touchdowns. Why? Because Kevin O'Connell was a part of that offense the last two years. He got there in 2020. You look at the last two years of what Kevin O'Connell has done with Sean McVay, of course, Sean McVay's offense, Kevin O'Connell helping them, but what they've gotten out of Tyler Higby. That's 10 touchdowns in two years. I think Irv can do that, if not more. Why? Because Irv is faster. Now we have to see what he comes off his knee, but he's faster. He's a better vertical threat. He's a better deep over threat. Higby's a little bit bigger, of course. So Higby gives you more of a vertical seam power guy that can take a hit from a safety where Irv's going to be your bender. And what a bender is, just for the novice, if the hole is open, meaning two high safeties and there's a hole in the middle, he's going to bend it in across the middle, making it an easy throw for Kirk over the linebacker's head if it's not Tampa 2. If it is single high safety, that means the middle of the field is closed. That means Irv's going to stay on the seam and then fade back. Now that puts the pressure on those two outs, that outside corner. If he fluffs in on Irv, you drop it over his head to Justin Jefferson. But we know Justin Jefferson is never going to get overlooked. So that's where Irv Smith Jr. comes into play. I think Irv can be a 60-catch, 600-yard, five-touchdown tight end. I think that's his number there. I think that – I mean, let, let's book it. We'll, we'll come back to this midway through the season and see if Irv's close. But I think that's what Irv can get. I, I like the movement of the tight ends. You watch Higby line up on one side, shift over to the left. Now, Tyler Conklin was the shift guy. And so Irv would be the one-by-one one tight end sitting on his hip. So now, who do they get to be your Conklin? Now, again, Kyle Rudolph, could he come back for cheap? Is that worth it? Maybe. I mean, he said he has some left in the tank. Um, you, you look at the draft. Is there a tight end in the draft? Because tight ends haven't gotten a lot of talk in the draft. That's my goal this weekend because uh, next week I'm doing the draft show for the Vikings. So my goal this weekend is to really dive into the tight end because secretly – the Vikings need another tight end. I think Irv is your TI, TE1, but they're going to need a TE2. They did bring a guy in, but you always want to bring another guy in just in case, like a, a second or third round pick. You never know with these tight ends. So in my opinion, 60, 605 touchdowns. That's Irv Smith. And that's almost exactly what Tyler Conklin did last year. Conklin was 61 catches, 593. I think Ooh. Irv, if healthy, is even more talented than Conklin. I'm going to go 70 and 700. Oh, uh, I'm just saying that's the basement for him. <laughs> he's got to get that. Yeah, no, no, you're right. And if they don't bring in another tight end, well, he's going to get all of those targets if they don't have a real Correct. tight end too. A uh, hockey question for you. So the Wild uh, win another one last night in Montreal, 2-0. Mm -hmm. And they've got a goaltending conundrum. Now, it's a good problem to have because Cam Talbot – and Marc-Andre Fleury just keep going back and forth. They're, they're both winning games. In fact, here are their stats, Ron. Since the Wild traded for Fleury, Fleury is 6-1, mm -hmm. and one, and his save percentage is 92.1. In that same time, Talbot, 6-0-3, oh, save percentage is 92.7. So they are basically even since Fleury got here. Uh, how is this team going to decide who their playoff goalie is going to be? So this is the thing. I, I'm, I always bring it back to the Mighty Ducks. And you remember they had the cat, and then they had the big dude. You know, the cat-like reflexes girl, and then they had the big dude. And it was, you know, it was up to, uh, and I always get the uh, best, uh, Emilio Estevez, and what's the other one? I, I get them confused. I think it was Emilio was in that one, um, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, sorry. Um, but it was an Estevez brother, I and mean, one of them changed his name. But I, I'm going to go with it's the coach's decision. I think if both are hot, you pick now flurry has the like the star power i guess i'd say because they bought him in and everybody was shocked like wait what we already have a goalkeeper and you're bringing in another one you're bringing another goalie in um and they did they brought another goaltender in and it's helped uh one if one's not going you can bring another one in and that's where 
you know, I think in the Mighty Ducks, you have that sentimental where, you know, the girl, he tells the girl, nope, you know, she's like, you got us here. And he's like, nope, you go in, you do this, you stop him. He's going to go glove side because he's flashy, blah, blah. Favorite part of the movie. Um, I, I think that's what it comes down to. It comes down to no ego. It comes down to nobody is b- bigger than the team. Uh, I think they both want to help the team out and win. Um, <clears throat> Talbot's been here. So technically, I would say go with Talbot because he's been here. He was the guy here before you bought in Flurry. Uh, but at the same time, you bring guys in for a reason. You got them for a reason. There's no reason to, to sit them in the playoffs if you bought them in for this reason because he has experience. And so I, I'm torn. Like, do you go? I mean, it's, the, it's the Mighty Ducks. Do you go with the duck that's been there or do you go with the new girl? Um, I, I, I'm going to say go with Flurry just off of top of the head because he has the cool emoji. Everybody puts up the flower now. I figured that one out on Twitter uh, when they're talking about Flurry making a stop or doing something. Uh, you know, they put the flower up. So I think that's cool. But yeah, I, I definitely think um, it's going to come down to the coach's decision. Like you said, they're even. There's no real deciding factor besides I'm going to sit here and pray about this. And as a coach's job, it's a job to figure it out. And I do think they need to pick a guy. Like, I, I don't think you can go into the playoffs with goaltender by committee because mm-hmm. then it's in the goalie's head. If I give up three goals today, am I going to get yanked in game two? True. I think you need yeah. someone someone to be able to go in there knowing that they have the freedom to make a couple mistakes. That's going to happen in a hockey game, but that they have the confidence of the coaching staff. And if they do need to get pulled, you've got a great option. But I think you need to to make a commitment at some point, and they're down to the final six games. Um, This is interesting. So the minor leagues have instituted a pitch clock in minor league Mm -hmm. baseball, and the data shows that 20 minutes is getting shaved off every game because of that pitch clock. With pace of play being such a problem in Major League Baseball, Ron, do the majors need to adopt the pitch clock next year? Yes. You look at back in 2001, 2002, 2003, the average game time was about two hours and 45 minutes. Now, they're like last year, it was three hours and 15, like 11 to 15 minutes. That's a lot of time. It's like, it doesn't sound like a lot, but then we do the actual math. Like at first I was like, oh, that's nothing. That's like 30 minutes. I'm like, wait, that's 30 minutes. Like 30 minutes. That's a lot of time of like, Whatever it is, getting your rosin, getting getting to the mound, talking to the ump, talking to the catcher, getting your gum right, you know, touching the glue in your hat, getting the sticky from your belt buckle, whatever they were doing, uh, because now pitchers are getting checked. If they throw a no hitter or they throw a great game as they come off, umpires want to check. Let me see your glove. Let me see under your glove. Let me see your wrist. Let me see, you know, let me check the hat. Let me pull up your shirt. You know, I I, I know one pitcher made the joke like I'm just going to get naked as I walk off the field, if I know the umps want to check me. Um, so, which I would love to see, uh, because that would just be TV gold. Like a, a, a pitcher stripping completely down and handing all his clothes to the ump and walking off, like, you know, with his hands out, like Antonio Brown going to the locker room, like that would be awesome. Um, so that that's where I see like, you know, and also the umps, like they have to stop making it about them. If there's a call, just go to the monitor. Like, don't don't get into this, like, whole back and forth thing. But, yeah, I think they need to bring the pitch clock back. Look how, how much better the NBA got when free throws changed. Players knew they were on the clock. You know, teams were even uh, – fans are even counting down some guys that they know take a long time at the line. And so I think that's the key, too. You, you can't let guys sit there, kiss their kids, flip the ball, dribble twice, put it behind their back, look over at the cheerleader, blow her a kiss, and then shoot a free throw. Now it's like you got to get it. Like Clay Thompson has his deal. Boom, get into it. He's quick. I think pitchers need to. Now, is that hard? Yeah, because some pitchers have a thing. But look at the Texas Longhorns. That idiot pitcher puts his head down because he's trying to get his mind right. Yes, I get it. There's nothing wrong with your mind right. But you're going through your motions as if there's not people on the base. And the guy steals home for Texas Tech. So that's another thing. Like, get out of that. Like, get out of that ritual. Speed it up. And if the game goes to two hours and 30 minutes, I think you can get some casuals that are willing to sit there. But that three hours, I mean, unless it's Batman, I don't want it. I mean, I've covered plenty of Twins games over the years, and routinely the clock hits about 10 o'clock, and you start to see people in the seventh and eighth inning. Even if it's a good game, they start filing out because it's too long. And I think the pitch clock, at least – it creates the flow where it feels like the game is constantly moving at a steady pace. You don't have pitchers that are slow working 
taking up all that time. Bonus question, Ron. One more Vikings question. Kevin O'Connell yesterday said he liked what he saw from last year's third-round pick, Kellen Mond. So my question for you is, will Kellen Mond ever start a game as a Minnesota Viking? Uh, no. I I'm going to say no right now. Um, unless they have clinched the NFC North and they have locked in, like they can't go higher than a two-seed or something, or three-seed. Um Maybe Kellen Mond starts, but that's Sean Mannion. Sean Mannion probably starts that game. Uh, he probably don't, though, because Kevin O'Connell believes in in momentum. I mean, unless he's if, if he's Sean McVay. He believes in momentum. He believes in going into the playoffs hot. So I just don't see a situation unless, you know, and I'm never going to throw that out there, but unless everybody gets hurt, I don't see Kellen Mond starting. Um, Kellen Mond looked robotic, I guess I'd say. He looks stiff. He looks like his his... Uh, chest protector or his rib cage is too big for him. Um, whereas he should just have a back flap. Like it, it's, you're not getting hit that hard. Um, I mean, yes, you are, but it's not like you don't need that whole deal. Um, and so I, I just feel like he has to loosen up. Like he reminds me of a stiffer Colin Kaepernick. Like he's really stiff, robotic. Uh, I just don't see it. Like Kevin O'Connell spoke well of him because he had to scout him. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I, I just, I, I feel like they tried. It didn't work. They wanted Justin Fields. They couldn't get up there. Um, so and not say they settled, but they settled for a third round pick that they hope was going to be good. He looked really good in college, but I feel like too, his coach made him a little bit robotic in his arm motion and some of his throwing. Um, no, I don't see him. I don't see him starting for the Vikings. Yeah, it's a good cautionary tale that just because someone has athleticism doesn't mean they're Mahomes. You got to have the other tools as well above the, the shoulders. And I don't know if he's there yet.